climate change, global warming, global cooling, we've heard it all. What's going on out there? Well, surface temperature of the planet is warmer than it was 100 years ago. About nine-tenths of a degree Celsius. Nine-tenths of a degree Celsius. That's all. Is that a lot? No, it's not a lot. There are two periods of warming, one in the early 20th century that could not have been caused by human beings because we hadn't put enough CO2 in the air, and one in the later part of the 20th century that either slows down or ends, depending upon whose data you use, somewhere in the late 1990s, uh, only to resume with the big El Nino that covered the news over the last couple of years. Uh, so that means that probably about half, maybe half, of that nine-tenths of a degree might be caused by greenhouse gases. Because when the planet warmed beginning in 1976, the temperature of the stratosphere started to drop. And that's a prediction of greenhouse theory that's not intuitive. You know, the great philosopher of science, Karl Popper, said, if you can meet a difficult prediction with your theory, you can continue to entertain your theory. So the theory's right, but the application of it is wrong. It is nowhere near as warm as it's supposed to be. The computer models are making systematic, dramatic errors over the entire tropics, which is 40% of the Earth, and it's where all our moisture comes from, or almost all of it. And let me stop you there. Yeah. Who does these computer models? You hear that? Global warming's going to kill us all. Governments. <laughs> there are 32 families of computer models Nine that tenths are of used a degree. by the United Nations, each government-sponsored. Uh, and all of them are predicting far, far too much warming. The disparity between what's been predicted to happen, which looks like this, and what is happening continues to grow. We know that for a fact. Yeah, you can, because you can just look at the weather balloon temperatures, you can look at the satellite temperatures, you can look at something called the reanalysis data. They all behave in concert. So they're showing the same thing, and the same thing is a lot different than this thing. However, we need to call the special counsel. Special counsel? Yes, because one model works. And you know what it is? It's the Russian model. So let me get this. So all the government models are like this. Yeah. The Russian model is like this. Yeah. The Russian model has the least warming in it. And the Russian model is the least warming, and the Russian model pretty much follows reality. Yeah. What's well, been tested over a few decades. Yeah, correct. You know, you know, if we were rational about this, Think about the daily weather forecast. You know, you watch the weather channel, they go, oh, this model says that, that model says that. We think this one's working the best, so we're going to rely on that. Well, for climate forecasts, we should be using the Russian model, but we're not. We use this big spate of all the other models that have this warming in them that's not occurring. Why are all these other government models, 31 of them, I guess, yeah. wrong? And why do they all go in the same direction? Up. Be because... They are what is called parameterized. That's, they're all parameterized. Can I translate parameterized into English? Fudged. Okay. That don't get the right answer, don't know the right answer for certain phenomena. So we essentially put in code steps that give us what we think it should be. And the systematic error that was made was the models were tuned, as it said, tuned tuned to simulate the warming of the early 20th century. It began in 1910, ended in 1945, about 0.45 degrees Celsius. Mark, that could not have been caused by carbon dioxide. Because there wasn't enough. That we had to put enough in. The, the background carbon dioxide concentration is 280 parts per million. When the second first warming started, it was 298 parts per million. If the atmosphere is that sensitive, to an 18 ppm change in CO2, we wouldn't be talking about this right, right now, and we'd be sweating bullets. So what you're saying is man-made carbon dioxide earlier, the last century, could not have produced... The early 20th century. Early 20th century could not have produced this heat. So what did? Do we know? Uh, no. And, you know, three most important words in life may not know. be I love you. It yeah. might be I don't know. I don't think anybody really knows what kicked off the, that warming. There's a, lots of theories. One is that it was the final escape 
from a cold period, multi-century period, known as the Little Ice Age. That's a plausibility. Why did it happen then? Uh, but we just don't really have a good explanation for that. But because we forced the computer models to say, ah, human influence, CO2 and other stuff, we made the models too sensitive. And so that's why when you get to the late 20th century, all of a sudden they're warming up like crazy, and the reality's down here. It was, it was guaranteed to happen. There, this was revealed in Science Magazine in late 2016, uh, and there was a paper that was published uh, by a French climate modeler called The Art and Science of Climate Model Tuning. And in it, he speaks of parameterizing, we could say fudging, the models to give his words an anticipated acceptable range of results. So it's the scientist, not the science, that's determining how much it's going to warm. I, I, a lot of people don't know this, but it happens to be true. And, you know, we could speculate as to why that paper was published right before the 2016 election. Um, I wouldn't want to impute causation, but gee, if... But I want to ask you about causation. Sure. 